It's been two years since India and UAE have entered into a comprehensive economic partnership agreement called SEPA. And to talk more on this, we are now joined by UAE Ambassador to India, Abdul Nasir Al Shali. Thank you so much, sir, for speaking to us on our channel here at Vion. As we mark two years since SEPA between India and UAE, if you can enhance key achievements so far in terms of bilateral trade and economic cooperation and also highlight some milestones achieved and areas of progress. Uh, so in a nutshell, uh, trade has increased by 16% uh, between 2022 and 2023, reaching 85 billion US dollars uh, in trade that includes oil. Um, there has been uh, quite the interest between UAE companies uh, and Indian companies wanting to invest in each other's country. Today, the UAE is the uh, second largest export destination for India, as the third largest uh, trading partner and the fourth largest uh, investor. Uh, so when you look at how the relationship has evolved, the big question now is what can we do more and how can we elevate this uh, further? And the way uh, we have looked at this is we need now to focus on startups, we need to focus on uh, SMEs and creating this ecosystem for them, which is why the UAE India uh, CEPA Council has been established to further uh, strengthen the economic relationship and take it to new heights. Uh, how has gold trade surged due to CEPA? By about 62%. Uh, and this has been tremendous. Uh, gold uh, is important uh, for India as, uh, as a commodity uh, that is cherished and traded. Uh, it's also a commodity that we can uh, relate to because jewelry is something that uh, we both wear, whether we are uh, Emiratis or Indians, uh, and trade has been growing since. Uh, so how will uh, SEPA benefit the India Middle East corridor, Middle East Europe corridor? In terms of connectivity, uh, exchange of goods, um, the ease of movement in terms of the logistics and all the investments that will be uh, involved in, in doing so, whether it's by expanding the capacity of certain ports, uh, by constructing new infrastructure in terms of roads, bridges, uh, and so on, uh, or even by investing in key hubs uh, in terms of trading those uh, goods and moving them uh, on to their uh, next destinations. So we've also seen that the SEPA Council was formed recently in January. So how will it help its implementation? By making sure that um, companies have uh, a one-stop shop in everything that is related to SEPA. Questions, uh, understanding the laws, uh, the regulations, whether they are in the UAE or in India, uh, wanting to get certain meetings, uh, helping in terms of uh, the facilitation of uh, exchanges between the two countries, and making sure that you're doing things the right way and you are starting where you're supposed to start. Uh, believe it or not, many of the uh, meetings that I have in the UAE and in India, from UAE companies and Indian companies, are companies that are thinking of uh, expanding into the other market and not being uh, entirely sure how can they start or how, or how can they st take the first step. And the SEPA Council, as well as the embassy, is uh, are there to help. Uh, so with silver imports to India surging through the UAE route, how do you see uh, foresee this agreement fostering growth, not just in precious metals, but across multiple sectors? SEPA... To look at SEPA, to better understand SEPA, you have to look at SEPA as an economic multiplier. Um, SEPA and the success of SEPA means uh, expanded trade, trade that will continue to go over the coming years, um, companies moving between the two countries, uh, establishing operations or expanding operations, and with that comes uh, employment, job creation, uh, capacity building, uh, sharing of knowledge, and always looking for new venues to cooperate, uh, such as advanced manufacturing, uh, space and satellite, uh, emerging technologies, AI, genome, and all sorts of other fields as well. Uh, so we've also seen announcements about UAE's investments in Jammu and Kashmir. We've seen last year as well. If you can highlight more about the UAE investments in Jammu and Kashmir. Well, there are a couple of things happening there. Um, the project is still uh, underway, but what I can tell you here is uh, the interest that we have is not in a single state, but it's quite diverse, uh, as much as India is diverse in terms of its states and what each state has to offer. And this is why whenever we hold, for example, business roundtables, you would see that uh, 
various emirates are being uh, present in different states because they have certain common interests with that state in terms of what they want to invest in, uh, collaborate on, so on and so forth. So uh, it's been two years, but we still have a long way to go. So if you can talk to us about the future plans and the vision under SIPA. Uh, we should be focusing on aviation and how can we expand uh, aviation links between the two countries. I cannot help but think what could happen if we had 10 times the flights that we have on a weekly basis. What if we were moving 10 times the number of passengers uh, every week between the UN and India? Uh, people to people uh, connectivity will grow. Uh, you would have uh, Indians traveling to the UAE for medical treatment, uh, Emiratis going to India for medical treatment, companies between India and the UAE uh, partnering up to uh, expand medical tourism. Um, today we have IIT Delhi and Abu Dhabi. What if uh, we made it easier for students to travel back and forth between the two countries, for parents to visit, for families to visit? Because we as Emiratis, we understand the the uh, the importance of family and being able to visit your students, uh, your kids, wherever they are studying. And, and so to me, I can only see aviation as a win-win for both countries because it's a massive economic multiplier. It has always been the case in the UAE in terms of aviation and tourism. It will always be a, a strong component of our economic base and GDP. And this will be the case uh, moving forward in India because of the tens of uh, international domestic airports being constructed and the fact that you have a, a growing demand when it comes to people wanting to travel domestically and internationally. Uh, the UAE today is a, a great aviation hub, uh, especially with uh, uh, Sheikh Zayed uh, Airport and with the new, uh, annou newly announced plans for Al Maktoum Airport, which could easily form as a second international hub for uh, Indian Airlines wanting to uh, fly the long haul flights and uh, to ferry Indians uh, between the two countries and elsewhere. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for speaking to us and congratulations and all the best uh, for future under SIPA. Thank you.